Hi. <laughs> so that's my talk. I won't read it out. But uh, yeah, so identity, purpose, and connectedness. These are the catalysts that have transformed Hull, the place I'm now proud to call my home. And I hope by sharing the steps that we've taken and the things that we've learned with you, some of you will be able to start begin creating your own communities and start transforming the people and places around you too. So, have you ever woken up in the morning, maybe after a few too many, and uh, ask yourself, you know, why am I here? What's my purpose? Or how did that post-it get on my head? <laughs> um, these are, are questions about identity, are ones that many of us ask ourselves every day of our lives. And they're tremendously important because our sense of identity, our sense of purpose, they define who we are, naturally. But also, they define the opportunities that we have, what we feel we can achieve. So the next word I referred to was connectedness. Now, when we get together as communities to celebrate or commemorate or perhaps mourn, we often light candles as a symbol of our unity and our connectedness in that symbolic event. Connectedness is tremendously powerful. It's one of the building blocks of our identity. And to truly understand that, I really want to talk about its opposite, isolation. So, <laughs> for those of you <coughs> lucky enough to be around kids or have some of your own, you'll probably have noticed they have the tendency to ask loads and loads of questions. Um, and quite often, you'll know that these are really awkward questions. <laughs> but um, also, often, they're really important because the answers that we get they define who we are. They define what we feel we can achieve. And it's not just the people that start to shape us. It's our environment, too. So, when we're, when we're isolated from the people who give us inspiration to pursue a different life, who give us ideas, creativity, or new ways of thinking, we often start to doubt ourselves. We begin asking ourselves questions like, how far can the apple fall from the tree? So it took a lot of persuasion for the TEDx team to get that up. But uh, if you haven't seen the semblance, that's me. Um, <laughs> now, I'm really lucky to say I didn't um, grow up in a slum. But as you probably gathered as I've been talking, I have got some experience of this kind of isolation. But before I continue, I just want to say uh, one thing to one person. I'm sorry, Mum, for anything I'm about to say next. So, <laughs> so this, is, this is my parents. Uh, as a son of two immigrants um, that moved to the country with just one asset, a great sense of fashion, <laughs> <laughs> but, but, with, but with no money and, and no qualifications and no network, I found myself growing up feeling isolated. Isolated from the people who could give me new ideas. Isolated from the people who could answer my questions and help me be inspired to pursue a different life. Now, despite having the dream that maybe one day perhaps I could be a pilot, or maybe, just maybe, I could run my own business, by the time I was in my late teens, I found myself working a dead-end job feeling totally crushed by my reality, not knowing how to step out of it. So, as you can imagine, when the chance came to move as far away from that reality as possible, I jumped at the chance to go to university. Now, <laughs> I'd love to say that I came to Hull because of its rich heritage, its culture, or its people, interesting as they are. <laughs> but... Um, the truth is, I came to Hull for a very different reason. I came to Hull because I had shit grades. <laughs> Who were the grades? <laughs> Spent too much time making turd emojis, obviously. But, uh... <laughs> so I began to realise that there was a kind of parallel between my story and that of Hull's. After the collapse of the fishing industry that had defined Hull's purpose and identity, 
for hundreds of years, a, whole, a huge vacuum was left in the city. And I soon learned it became known as a city at the end of the line that was defined by high unemployment, low wages, and even lower aspirations. So I'm in Hull, and I started to wonder, is Hull just a bigger version of me, with people believing there's a load of things they can't do? And when the time came to graduate, I started asking myself questions that all philosophy graduates ask themselves. Not, do I exist, but... What the heck am I going to do now? <laughs> so, Hull and I, we were united in our search for a renewed sense of identity, purpose, and connectedness. And in that search, I started to realize that the things I was reading about was everything to do with tech. And I set about trying to somehow find a way to get into that industry. Everything I was reading about um, indicated these kind of mythical places that existed, like California, Texas, and Mumbai, that were brimming full of these amazing people, techies, entrepreneurs, startups. And I was convinced, I remember thinking at the time, if I want to be there, I'll need to move to, the, to America. And only weeks before I sent my application, two things happened. Hull was nominated as the UK City of Culture 2017. And this was a huge moment for everyone in the city because our hearts were full of pride. And with that pride, for the first time in such a long time, came the authentic hope of something better. And the second thing that happened was it turned out that the ultra-fast internet fiber, a third of the ultra-fast internet fiber in the UK, was buried under the streets of Hull, making us the most connected city in the UK. And this was a pivotal moment for the formation of a technology community. Another thing that was happening whilst this was at the same time was techies, professionals, digital pioneers, as I call them, started to gravitate towards a newly formed initiative that you can see behind me, the Center for Digital Innovation Hull. And as this happened, there was an explosion of ideas, creativity, and collaboration. Hull was transforming. Tech was transforming. And as people came together, this vacuum started to disappear. And suddenly, people that had been invisible to the general public started to become noticed. And Hull, that was even left off the weather map until now, <laughs> started to see itself mentioned in key industrial reports and parliamentary announcements. So you're probably wondering at this point, what's all the fuss about digital? Well, Apple, a digital company, was recently announced as the world's first company to be valued at a trillion dollars. I don't know how many zeros are in a trillion, but it's a lot, I can assure you. So. <laughs> Unlike so many un other industries, digital is accessible. It's really hard to be a pilot if you don't have loads of money and you don't have access to loads of resources. But you can learn to code online for free. And just think about that for a moment. If you're a creator, if you're an innovator, if you can solve problems, you can do a few lines of code and push your ideas out to billions with a click of a button. Isn't that astounding? I'm sure that the people who are learning to code online for free today will be the founders of the next trillion dollar startup tomorrow. So, over just a couple of years, over 350 digital pioneers, expert startups, started making their way to our community. And as they did so, that vacuum started to evaporate. It was filled. So suddenly, people had a reason to come to Hull for reasons other than shit grades. People, people realized that actually, maybe this wasn't a city at the end of the line. Perhaps this is the start of a brand new journey. I now want to share some of the stories of these incredible people whose lives have been transformed by digital. So this is Sundeep. Sundeep grew up in Teesside. Sorry for anyone in Teesside. Um, 
But um, Sundi came to Hull to start a career in tech with a software company based here. Think of how many thousands of opportunities she drove past to get here. Hull is where the opportunities are now. This is Hayden, one of the most recent members of our community, an amazing guy. And despite, I'm not going to go into huge amounts of detail, but Hayden grew up, grew up without access to significant advantages and resources. And despite this, by the age of 21, Hayden had invented the world's smallest Arduino in his bedroom and shipped it out to thousands of people across the globe. Now, this is a huge, incredible achievement, but it's also inspiring for every boy and every girl that grows up in Hull with Hayden's background that wants to do something different with their lives. It's incredible. Now, this is Lewis. Lewis and his colleagues graduated from the University of Hull as highly skilled software developers. They came to the community, and just months after they had joined, they had founded their first software company, which is now highly successful. Suddenly, Hull has become a place to stay and flourish. This is Saab, a global company with a turnover of over $3 billion. And when they were looking for a new place to base their team, they could have chosen anywhere across the planet. And yet they chose Hull because they knew a set of highly specialized individuals existed here. Hull is where the talent is now. And this is Jonathan and Christina, two heroes of mine. They're highly experienced entrepreneurs. And together they co-founded Moodbeam, a health tech startup recently valued at a million pounds. Not only is this a triumph for Hull and for mental health, but their willingness to share knowledge with people and their experience has created a mentorship pathway for young entrepreneurs and people looking to get into digital. Suddenly our people-centered community has become a place for connected learning and shared insights. And it's not just the people that have been transformed by Hull. This is a picture of the fruit market where our tech community is now based. You can see it was taken a little while ago, but, um, and it's characterized by the trade of physical goods. Fast forward a few years, and you can see the decline of the fishing industry led to the rapid decay of the landscape here. But just a few more years, and you can see that area has sprung back to life. This is a picture a year ago at the Freedom Festival. And you can see that the market has been given a new lease of life by the shops, bars, cafes, restaurants that line the streets that are here to cater for the tech community there. So I now want to talk about five tips that we've learned to help you get started in building your own community. So this is the first. Lots of people think, let's build a building and fill it with people. That's not the way it works. Start with people. Find the thing that your digital pioneers need and give it to them. Find the common threads that link people together. Find the people that see the opportunities not the vacuum, because these are the people that will generate momentum and draw other people to your community. The next thing is people see success and try to emulate it, hitting copy and paste. But actually, you know, if I had a, a tenor for every digital-ish city in the UK with a Silicon Valley or a Silicon Roundabout, or et cetera, I'd be a lot richer than I would. And that's not a bad thing. But don't let someone else's success shroud what you do well. Make sure you become aware of your own unique strengths. That might be the landscape, the infrastructure, the terrain, the people. For us, it was connectedness and the ability to being, build big businesses and startups together. But find your strength and leverage it. The next thing is nurture a culture of collaboration, not competition. Competition is erosive and toxic for communities because people put resources together and close, um, close up. Collaborative communities, on the other hand, are open. They share knowledge. They find ways of combining strengths and resources to create opportunities that never existed before. Now, this is something we've learned. It's really hard to do something right the first time around. And in fact, don't bother. Just Make sure when you start, learn from it, refine your model, evolve it, grow it, let it flourish.
And when you finally do get it right, make sure you tell the world. Shout about it. You want people to hear about it and come to your cause. So I want to leave you with this. Nothing fundamental about the structure of Hull has changed. What has changed is that we now have a renewed sense of identity, purpose, and connectedness. I'm no longer isolated, nor is Hull. Thank you.